Today, I stand before you to present my last State of the City address as mayor of the city of Miami, which I must begin by thanking the residents of the city of Miami who have allowed me to serve our city for 22 years. First, as a citywide commissioner, that same year, on that seat fall the vice mayor, then as a district commissioner, and then as mayor. As a 33rd mayor of our magic city, I am humbled to say that I have presided over the worst and the best of times in the city of Miami over the past eight years. Since the first time I walked into this building as an elected official 22 years ago, one thing has remained constant, my commitment to serve the residents of the city of Miami. And while many elected officials talk about public service, for 22 years, I have tried to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And it hasn't been easy. People often confuse what is right for what is popular or for what is politically expedient. But I am proud to say that for 22 years, I have done what is best for the resident of the city of Miami. Whether it was popular or not, with total disregard for what's best politically. That is why my legacy is and will remain my years of service as some people call the people's mayor. So today, I stand before you to report that the state of the city of Miami is great. And if we stay, the course will remain great as we continue to tackle and resolve the constant challenges that come with growth and success. I must begin by thanking my colleagues on the City Commission who are here today Kion is traveling, but he's here. We all have our own ideas regarding what is best for our residents. Don't forget about yesterday. And their future, but we always uh, work it out. And in the end, we have been able to forge a government that considers all the options and make policies that prove time and time again that our system of government has its checks and balances and it works. So to my colleagues, Chairman Keon Hardeman, Vice Chairman Ken Russell, Commissioner Willie Gord, Commissioner Frank Arroyo, Commissioner Francis Suarez, Thank you very much for all the years and all we can, of we done that we can only describe as an extraordinary time. So some people say uh, you should write a book and and and, and do something. Uh, 2010, 2011, there, there were very difficult years. And uh, we, uh, we, the commissioners, we, the administration, we, with the support of the uh, directors, uh, we believe we did the right thing. And, uh, and that's important because we cannot allow history to be rewritten. And many new residents uh, may not know that uh, we have very difficult times 
but because of the commission, because of our leaders in the city, because of the administration, uh, we came out. We were the first city to go down with the bubble, but we were the first city to come out uh, of the crisis. And speaking of extraordinary, I want to thank our city manager, Daniel Alfonso, for his dedicated uh, service. <laughs> Danny, not only you have put in place a spectacular team, but when you confront an issue, you consider its implications five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. You have a keen understanding that the decisions we make today will impact our city for years to come. So we never in this administration have tried to kick the can. And for that, I thank you because I know, Danny, no es fácil. So, so big thanks also to your dream team. Assistant City Manager, Dr. Seri Ikawaba. Assistant City Manager Alberto Parjus, and Assistant City Manager Fernando Casamayor. Listen, if they can get it done, it cannot be done. So thank you guys. And speaking of managers, as you all know, we had a few over the last eight years. So I would really now want to thank several peoples that were part uh, of my history and the city's history. City manager Pete Hernandez, city manager Carlos Bigoya, city manager Tony Crabb, and city manager Johnny Martinez for the service to the city of Miami. And now I would like to report to the residents of the city of Miami specifically about the state of our great city. One of the main challenges that we face in the city of Miami is maintaining the delicate balance between necessary growth and quality of life. As you all know, I have never been about big projects and tall buildings, but rather about day-to-day -day services and protecting our neighborhoods. I am proud to say that over the last eight years, we have seen great growth that has allowed us to maintain our property taxes low while increasing services and investing in infrastructure. It has also allowed us to prove that government can work well when it wants to. So I must begin by reporting that the Miami Marine Stadium, abandoned since 1992, neglected by several administration, we, see the com we will see the complexion of phase one of this renovation very soon before July. It has, <laughs> it hasn't been easy, but we made it a priority. And at the end, we have a solid plan that will renovate and reopen one of Miami's crown jewel. As a matter of fact, uh, we know some of you will probably see 
in the next few days some scaffolding uh, at the Marine Stadium. And this is a very aggressive phase one from architects Heisenbottle and Candela. And they will deliver uh, the plan uh, very soon. And from then, we have step two. So I look forward to uh, the next years, the next year we believe that this will be on the way. And uh, we will be along with the residents just in the public celebrating when the Miami Marine Stadium has its grand opening and it will be given back to the people of Miami. So, so the next mayor, remember, invite me please, I will be there. And speaking of priorities, public safety has been and continues to be the priority of this commission and of this administration. We always said that when we could, we would. And today I can report that we have allocated extraordinary resources to our police and fire departments and currently sworn staffing is the highest of the history of the City of Miami Police Department. Never before we had had so many sworn police officers as we have today in the City of Miami. In 2016, we have the lowest numbers of reported crimes since 1999, and part one crimes decreased 2.6 between 2015 and 2016. For that, I want to thank our Chief of Police, Rodolfo Llanes, <laughs> Deputy Chief, Luis Cabrera, his team for the great work. Thank you, Chief. And of course, in the next month to come, this city will keep raising the bar and ensuring that our city is safe for residents and visitors. And speaking of safety, our fire department is also doing a tremendous job. The City of Miami Fire Department, under the leadership of Chief Kim, who today, he retires, after 32 years of dedicated service to our Magic City, responded last year to 102,000 calls for service and conducted over 40,000 building inspection. A clear testament of the quality of service provided by the chief, his men and women, is the 99% satisfaction rate outcome of our most recent customer satisfaction survey. Today, so today I want to thank Chief Kem. I know he's driving back from Orlando and uh, for his many years of service and leadership it's uh, no wonder that he was awarded Fire Chief of the Year by the Metropolitan Fire Chief Association. I would also like to thank his deputy, now our new chief, Joseph Saralban. Chief, welcome. So Chief Saralban, we really look forward on the month ahead, as you know, you know, this is a joke that has been used too many times in the last week. You have very big shoes to fill. But I thought I, want, I wanted to say that. So, but it has been said many times that. So, over the
The past eight years, we have gotten a lot of media coverage. In fact, whether good news or bad, the city of Miami is also the talk of the assignment desk. But now, I would like to take a few moments to highlight the accomplishment that didn't make the six o'clock news or your Twitter feed. I am so proud of our law department. The law department was the key to facilitate the referendum to give Dade Heritage Trust a permanent and historic home in the heart of the city of Miami. Now, this amazing group of dedicated residents can focus on protecting and preserving our city's history and historical sites. Our law department, under the leadership of Victoria Mendez, has made us proud taking Florida power and light all the way to the Supreme Court of the state of Florida, who found in favor on our city and our residents. And while now some Florida legislators are trying to undo our victory, we will fight for what is best for our residents. So, Madam City Attorney, sometimes I call an Erin Brockovitz. <laughs> it's a movie, and uh, it's, a, it's a leader that fought the powers. So thank you, uh, Victoria, for your hard work and dedication. You and your team have fought the good fight time and time again, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And speaking of our unsung heroes, our city clerk office has also raised the bar, not only by keeping records and providing information over the past uh, decades, but now this office, over the past year alone, has processed 1,977 passport application for our residents which is why we must take a moment to thank our city clerk, Todd Hannon, and his team for this amazing year of service to our residents. By the way, when I came in this morning, Todd, all these halls was filled with people with babies, and I thought, are these people coming to the speech or not? There was a line for the passports, and uh, so, you know, that's a service that probably people don't know, but it's a great service. If I have to sum up last year in one word, it will be growth. So we must take a moment to thank our building department whose employees have seen the busiest year ever. Think about this, last fiscal year, 2015-2016 saw an increase of 22% in construction activity in the city of Miami compared to fiscal year 2014. What does this look like? Well, last year, our building department issued 7,274 building permits, review 99,000 construction plans, conducted 99,380 inspection, and finalized dozens of 40 and 50 years recertification. Thank you, the Director Camero, Building Official Pons, your team for your great work. So last year was marked by unique challenges, uh, one of which was the Zika outbreak in Wynwood. And while a lot was written and said about our response to Zika, I want to take a moment to thank our Code Compliance Department for their role 
in tackling this outbreak. Twelve code compliance officers were reassigned on a full-time basis to manage the outbreak. 950 houses were inspected within the Sika zone, and throughout that time, we maintained constant contact with residents and business order regarding our work to uh, fight the threat and prevent future ones. As you will recall, we changed the name of this department from code enforcement to code compliance because we thought, the commission thought, that what is important for the resident is compliance. That resolve the issues uh, in the neighborhood. So they have focused also on educating residents about our zoning ordinance and procedures. Today, I am proud to report that we have seen a reduction in terms of violations and an increase in terms of compliance. For instance, last year, on, on the few, the last three or four months, 7,000 citations were issued. Of those, now 4,980 are in compliance. I want to thank Director Diaz, Jessica, and the team for their hard work and dedication. But none of this could be achieved without the diligent work of our budget department. Our budget department is the backbone of our city. And for the last two years, they have received recognition for their outstanding work. And while this acclaim and the impact that their diligence has had in our fiscal stability, it is important to note today, and I would like to highlight their role in providing something that is very important for many of our workers, the stability to the former temporary employee. Specifically, this uh, budget department found a way to provide 116 temporary employees, many of whom have been temporary for 15 and 20 years with permanent status, with benefits, and with security. The dignity and the stability that this has brought to these 116 families is something to be very proud of, and especially while maintaining our commitment to reduce property taxes. Of course, we keep saying it. Every year, thanks, Commissioner, we uh, keep reducing property taxes. And uh, this year, uh, we're going to be also presenting a budget uh, with property taxes uh, reduction. So thank you very much, Director Chris Rose and your team for your dedication and ingenuity. And uh, speaking of awards, our finance department is yet another award-winning department. Once again, they produce our comprehensive annual report on time, the CAFR, Commissioner Carollo, thank you. He is the one that pushes and pushes, the accountant. Uh, and in accordance with financial integrity principles. It is not surprise that our bond rating is better than ever. Thank you, Director Jose Fernandez and your team for a job well done. And yesterday we had at the commission meeting uh, several uh, awards and proclamation. One of them was for an unknown hero, 
He has never been in the media. No one has ever done a story about him. Uh, but yesterday, Eugenio Torriente retired as an employee of the Solid Waste Department of the city of Miami. I met him about 40 years ago while I was doing stories in Little Havana. He was cleaning the streets uh, of Little Havana and as a volunteer. And then he was able to get uh, a job at the Solid Waste uh, Department. And yesterday, Director Mario Nunez came up with him uh, to the dais with the mayor and the commissioners and the manager um, to give him a proclamation. And um, it's, it's important because this humble uh, Cuban American uh, became the oldest employee to work in the history of the city of Miami every single day. Yesterday, he was 81 years old, and he retired after 27 years of work in the Solid Waste Department. <laughs> and of course, the Solid Waste Department is working like a well-oiled machine. Uh, today, I'm very proud to say that the level of customer satisfaction regarding waste collection is at the highest that it has never been in the history of the city of Miami. Our amazing, <laughs> our amazing solid waste team was instrumental in tackling the Zika crisis and of course, every single day to continue working on Keep Miami Beautiful, a campaign that Commissioner Gord began two years ago and that has resulted in more than 300,000 pounds of trash and garbage uh, that have been picked up every single year from the streets uh, of the city of Miami. So today, on behalf of all the residents, I want to thank you, Director Mario Nunez and your team, for all your hard work. And of course, because Solid Waste touches uh, every single day the lives of every resident of the city of Miami. And others department, like our community and economic development department, it helps entire neighborhoods by focusing on the neediest among our residents. I am proud to report that last year, the department assisted 21 low-income families in the city of Miami in becoming first-time home buyers and aid in the rehabilitation of 15 residential homes. 21 may not be a number that it will be uh, reported by the national media, but think about this. 21 families in the city of Miami now have uh, joined the American dream. They have a home of their own, and this is uh, because of the city of Miami, so thank you. Uh, Director Mensa, Deputy Director Duran, thank you very much. And while for years many of our residents' concerns have centered on solid waste collection and potholes, today the number one issue is traffic and transit. And while the city's jurisdiction is limited in this regard, I couldn't be prouder of the work that our transportation department has done over the past uh, year. Actually, in fiscal year 2015-2016, we launched three new routes for our successful trolleys. And now we have 10 routes 
Today, we own 44 trolleys, and last year, we surpassed the five million riders of trolleys in the city of Miami, proving that our residents will use public transit if it's reliable, clean, and convenient. And speaking of elevating the quality of life of our residents, this year our Parks Department has once again surpassed expectation from refurbishing playgrounds to free fitness classes. 10,000 residents are using our parks uh, every month, enjoying uh, these pieces of paradise at our city of Miami parks. I would like to take a moment to thank our parks director, Kevin Kerwin, and his team for ensuring that every neighborhood has access to recreational space. Our communications department is also making sure that uh, we, as well as our resources, are accessible to our residents. Our ever-expanding social media footprint and informative program is taking our community engagement to the next level and ensuring that our residents are informed about services, resources, and activities that our Magic City offers. So, Director Diana Gonzalez, thank you very much for your work. And, and finally, GSA grants the Agenda Office Information and Technology, Net Procurement, Real Estate and Asset Management, Human Resources, Civil Service, our Office of Equal Opportunity. We couldn't do what we do every day without you uh, dedicating your service. So today, on behalf of the residents of the City of Miami, I want to thank you for your service. Know that it's necessary and appreciate it. And now, for the challenge ahead. Sea level rise. Each of this city's departments are not only crucial for the day-to-day -day operation of Miami, but also for the future of Miami. They will each have a role in tackling the biggest challenge that the city of Miami will ever face, sea level rise. In the past year, the city of Miami, together with Miami-Dade County and the city of Miami Beach, was awarded and joined the 100 Resilient Cities Global Network, funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. We hosted a resilience workshop for 200 community, business, and public sector leaders within Greater Miami. This administration has hired the city's first Chief Resilient Officer, Jane Gilbert, to lead our new Office of Resiliency and Sustainability, as well as former uh, in, in Interdepartmental Resilient Infrastructure Committee to ensure that all future capital improvement investment account for sea level rise. The Sea Level Rise Advisory Board, thank you, Commissioner uh, Suarez, comprised of a varied group of experts and local leaders, continues to gain strength and influence. They have begun working in partnership with the Planning and Zoning Department, as well as other city departments, to ensure that sea level rise will be addressed in every phase of the city, while also being sensitive to the concerns of the residents, developers, and business owners. Today, we will sign the Mayor's Climate Action Pledge, formally joining the Southeast Florida Regional Climate Compact, ensuring that we will collaborate with all of the municipalities and counties in all the region. Our Planning Department recent workshop for the Sea Level Right Committee on our most vulnerable community, Shortcrest, has shown that we can plan, protect, and continue to build in our communities, even looking past the next 50 years. 
Finally, this upcoming November, there is the possibility to bring to the Commission for them to place on a ballot a bond initiative to the borders where at least $100 million will go to increasing the resilience of all the regions of the city of Miami. Mind you, this bond issue will not increase property taxes, but will ensure that our grandchildren will still be able to call Miami a home. In, in Florida, school districts are separate from cities and counties. So most residents believe that cities have nothing to do with education. In the city of Miami, that is not the case. Actually, yesterday we were with uh, Governor Rick Scott and uh, Superintendent Carballo at Coraway Elementary. The reason that the governor visited Coraway Elementary is because this school located near Coraway is the oldest bilingual schools in the United States of America. 50 years of bilingual education. None other school have uh, had this long time teaching Spanish and English. And the governor came to announce that uh, he's putting more money in education. So this year, beyond our commitment to Miami-Dade County Public School, we partnered with Take Stock in Children and began a mentoring program in all the public high schools in the city of Miami, the five of them. We have been working hard to educate our residents on what an impact one hour can have on the life of a high school student. I want to thank the manager because he has allowed every single employee of the city of Miami to use uh, an hour, a paid hour, to become a mentor. We began this program in January, and today we have more than 60 uh, mentors. I am personally mentoring a student at Miami Senior High. And after receiving take stock training and spending time with my mentee, I can tell you that mentoring works. As a matter of fact, last Monday, I went for the third time. And the student uh, wasn't at his class. And I can tell you that the counselor became very concerned and finally uh, they found him in another class and they brought it and we look at the computer and that young man about two months ago had A's, A's, A's uh, in all his disciplines and had kind of a good attendance record. Suddenly, suddenly, uh, the computer shows that he has F, 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 and tardy and absent. So they call him in. And an assistant principal came in. And, uh, and we spoke. And we, we said, what is going on? He didn't want to say anything. Uh, until uh, I said, look, you know, I've been talking to you 
about what I did. I, I went to school and I worked because I remembered that he was telling me the other day that he was trying to get a, a job in Domino Pizza. And uh, I said, did you get a job? Did you, what, 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 are, you, what are you doing? And uh, so he starts crying. And he said, um, I, I, can, I can handle this. Uh, uh, my brother lost his job. My mother crashed. The, the car was a total loss. Um, now she cannot go to uh, her job. Now I'm the only one bringing money into the house. I just can't handle this. And uh, I don't know what to do. So it happened that the, on that day, they, uh, William Porro, from our grants department will be interviewing young men and women for the internship program here in in the city next uh, summer and William is there and you saw the young man right and uh, so the principal and and the counselor and I recommended that he attend uh, the interview and uh, and the and when he knew that he could work during the summer in the city making some money and that can he can still keep the 12 hours on saturday and the 12 hours on sunday in domino pizza uh, he became very happy and said, so now I can tell my mom that I will be able to support uh, my house. And uh, mentorship works. So I, I think that it's important that we understand that it's good to invest in education. And, uh, and you know, yesterday we, the superintendent and myself, we all supported the, the governor's budget uh, in a holistic way because you cannot invest uh, a lot of money in education and then when they graduate, they leave because they don't have a good job, a decent job with a decent salary here. So these are... Uh, the things that I personally have think about mentoring, and it's important that uh, we continue to see uh, this uh, uh, young men and women. I, I will continue to be a mentor, and we will continue to stay on track uh, and uh, uh, help this graduate to uh, high school. So we will continue also uh, the international uh, agenda of the city of Miami. Uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, people have said uh, that. Uh, we are, I think Archbishop said it, the day, the day that Archbishop Wensky uh, was bestowed with uh, Archbishop, I remember his words. I think that the, when, uh, I think he, he said, when I got the call from the Vatican, uh, I was very happy to be the Archbishop of the closest Latin American city to the United States. And, uh, and I remember that, and, and we are. We even have foreign policy, uh, you know, in the city of, uh, of Miami. Uh, so this is why the Mayor's International Council has been very important. Uh, we have two members here, Julian Linares, Adit Eden. Thank you very much, uh, guys, for your service. We have Wasim, Wasim Shomar, too. By the way, um, um, soon the Mayor's International Council voted uh, recently, uh, and, and, and soon 
there will be um, a sister city relationship with one of the most unique uh, cities in the world. And we thank you for that, Wasim. The city of Nazareth in Israel. So, We have to thank the consuls uh, that are here today. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I really uh, appreciate uh, uh, the collaboration between the city of Miami and all the consulates uh, that uh, we have here in the city. Oh, I forgot, Barry Johnson, our, the former CEO, Barry. So, Barry retired but from the chamber, but he remains as a very active uh, member of the Mayor's International uh, Council. And uh, Commissioner Gord, I would like to thank you because uh, you have been instrumental in, in, in establishing several of these uh, relationships uh, and very soon there will be a trade mission uh, to South America to uh, participate on this. I want to thank uh, also uh, former Commissioner Rosario Kennedy, who is here. Uh, and of course, Monty Trainer, which is uh, the architect of the, uh, of New Year's Eve uh, extravaganza. So, I have lived in the city of Miami my entire adult life. I raised my three children, Raquel, Tommy, Jose. I married Ana Cristina. And I have lived all my life in the city of Miami, not like in Miami, Kendall, or in Miami. No, in the city of Miami. My four grandchildren were born and live in this amazing city. And I will remain as a resident for the rest of my life. And while these events are rarely marked by declarations of love, I would proudly say that I love the city of Miami. So, so today, another member of the Mayor's International Council, Jose Fuentes, thank you very much for your, for your work. So today I ask you, my colleagues on the City Commission and the future elected officials and employees of the City of Miami to grant me in exchange for these 22 years uh, one wish. Please take care of our city. Remember that our city is not made of skyscrapers and bridges, but rather is made by our residents. So protecting our city means protecting our residents and ensuring that they, their children and their children's children can call this magic city their home. We live in the best city in the world. Let's keep it that way. Thank you.